This is really cool. This is, again, these are all 25-minute or 10-minute games. The engine says this is equal, and the engine. what that means is if the engine's playing both sides, it'll be a draw. It's, it's equal. And as a human and as a commentator, you have to decide for your audience that if the engine says it's equal, which side's playing for a win? And that wasn't easy for me and Danya. Uh, we weren't sure who was playing for a win. Maybe they both were. Um, white could win because white's up a pawn and these pawns are all isolated. Black could win because this rook's pinning the bishop. This pawn's really weak, making this a strong pawn. This bishop's better than this bishop and this king's better than this king. So that's why it's equal. Both sides have advantages. And we weren't sure who was playing for the win. But then at some point, I was like, well, black is. And he and, and then Danya was like, yeah. Okay. So he played check, which is okay. King here, that's okay. Check is okay. And if black wanted to draw, he probably could just go here. And they probably would draw. The thing is, white has to be careful... Like, here the engine just wants to repeat. If you're like, oh, I can win a pawn. Look at me. Um, if you take this pawn, for example, then you're losing. You lose your bishop. And if you don't take that pawn and I take this pawn, then I'll take black. So that's why the engine just wants to repeat. So black played king takes a three, probably thinking he was playing for a win. And white made an excellent move here, which Donnie had already suggested. The, the, this is pinned. So king d1. Okay, and this is a draw with correct play. Okay. Check, check, king here. And in this position, um, after king d1, here, here, Danya thought black should take this. And Danya was right. After rook takes, 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 I actually don't know which side I'd rather be. This is a passed pawn. This is a passed pawn. And these pawns are all hanging. So I guess in a blitz game, I would definitely want to be black. But the engine says everything is a dead draw because it plays like king here and it gives these pawns away and white wins these pawns and it's a draw. So this is a draw. Okay, and black blundered. Um, good thing for him, he blundered. <laughs> and, and he played king a2. Now white's winning and it's really hard for a human to not play king c2 because it's so obvious looking. That throws away the win. There's another move that's obviously, that's an obvious move, and it just wins immediately. And the only reason not to play it is you don't see it. You know, the, they both have like less than a minute on their clock. Uh, if it was a slow game, in this position, black would take that and take that and hope to draw and he wouldn't play that because they would both see the winning move here. But since they're both moving in like three or four seconds, mistakes are made. You could argue, I wouldn't disagree with you. You could, you could argue, why are we having a tournament with all the best players in the world to decide who gets to the candidates tournament and the games are decided when both players have seconds left and they're just blitzing? I, you know, that's a reasonable argument. Like, why are we doing this? Um, I don't know. That's what we do. And it's weird to have a tournament that has Blitz and Armageddon and Rapid as tiebreakers. And then the winner goes to the candidates, which is all slow chess. And the world championship is all slow chess. Why are we deciding who plays slow chess for the world championship by playing Blitz and Bullet? The answer is fries. Ooh, period. Okay, um, right, rook b4, and then that's it. You know, attacking everything, and that's it. It's winning. Now, he might not win because it's a blitz game. Like, this is the engine line. And the thing is, if you take this, then bishop b2, and the bishop's pinned. So you should take this. And the engine says white's winning. I'm not sure how easy it is. The engine says it's easy, but I don't believe it. White's actually going to play f3 and take with the king and then run over here and take this. Now, the bishop is the right color for the rook pawn, so it should just be a win. 
Okay, he played king c2, which seems like sort of an obvious move. It traps all of these pieces. And once again, rook takes c1 check draws. It's the same, the, the same deviled egg. But he played a3, which also draws, because we could play rook takes next move. If I was white here, I'd be like, how do I mate black? But you don't, because he can always sack the exchange and take this, and he's not losing. Go Pam. I'm 51 years old. I'll be 52 soon. Capitals 11 subscribed. Hooray. Doesn't that first line result in rook b2 check winning the bishop? Uh, rook takes c1, king takes c1. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. I have to play this move. That's the only move. That's correct. And this is this is a draw, it says. If I take this, I'm good. And rook f8 really isn't a move because, you know, by queen my a pawn, I win. Yeah, I can't play bishop takes b2 right away. F2 is my brother pointed out because of that. But he played a3, which is which is fine. Rook a8, threatening checkmate. And not only does the move draw that he played, but bishop c5 also draws. And black wants to win. Okay. And this is a draw. This is all a draw. And king b1 loses. Never play king b1. So... Question is, I don't know the answer, but I think I know the answer. Question is, was White trying to win? Did White say, well, if I go here, he'll go here, and I'll go here, and he'll go here, but I want to win. That's hard for me to believe. Um, having said that, why didn't he go here? Um the only other move that's not this is bishop here, but then you can't take that if you're defending. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, this draws and this draws. Everything draws. In fact, moving the king the other way draws. And the reason that draws is actually funny. If you win this pawn with your king and give up all these pawns, you can sack your rook for this pawn and draw. This is the wrong color for black. So king d1 actually draws and checking in here draw he went the wrong way. Now he's losing. Yeah, now this pawn's really strong, and the king's not there to stop it. Um, yeah, so the, black's winning now. So, I mean, it's just time trouble, and you can't think straight. You're tired because you've played 10 games of chess already and time trouble. This move is just nonsensical. After this, you're just, black's completely winning. Black's queening. All these pawns are hanging. So why you wouldn't keep checking or try to win this pawn is weird. This move is a strange move. Okay, so now he's winning, and he messes up, of course. Yeah, and in this position, e2 is just what happened in the game, and it wins. It's a very easy win. It's weird he didn't play e2. Okay, This is the same as the game, except he didn't have this pawn. And he, and he win. Like, that's it. There's nothing analyzed. Resigns. And he didn't do that. And Danya's like, what? So he made a horrible blunder here. Instead of doing this, he took here. And I was thinking, well, that's okay because he's stopping that. And he'll still do this. And that is what happened. And the engine said, no, no. White has an amazing drawing move here. Incredible. And you know, he didn't see it, so he lost. But, I mean, it's it's really nice. Obviously... Black didn't see it either when he took. It looks like it doesn't matter what white does, we go here. And he missed this move drawing, which is the only move that draws. And the reason is after here, you can take with check. That's why. That's incredible. And th this is a draw. Um, if you play here, I can get behind the pawn and you can't, you can't queen it. That was the point of bishop g3 is he stopped rook here. So if you decide, I, I don't want him to play rook e5, you could play here or here, for example. And now rook g2. It stops all the pawns. And here comes this pawn. King comes here. This is a draw. The engine says so. 
Um, bishop takes h4 doesn't work because of rook here, king here, rook e8. And you can't win. The only way you can win is you have to save this pawn and win the rook for this pawn. And the engine says you can't do it. Another idea for, for white is to stop this pawn and go behind this pawn. Now, if I was black, I would think I have excellent winning chances here. And I probably do, but the engine says that you don't. It says everything's a draw. So rook g5 draws. After e2, white can resign. e2, e1 resigns. And he played this. Now rook g5 is a draw, but he missed it. He checked. And this is where Danya, I didn't have an engine, Danya said king b3 is the only winning move, and now I know why. I didn't know why when he said it, but now I know why. Because king b3 threatens a2 winning, and it threatens this. There's two threats. These other moves don't necessarily win. Um, so, for example, let's play king b4, and I was like, why doesn't that win? Because you can go here. Well, now it says king b3 wins by triangulating. So maybe king b4 does win too. Anyway, after this, it resigns. It resigns again. There's nothing you can do. If you play rook here, I play bishop here. And I'm threatening bishop d2, queening my e-pawn. And if you don't want me to play bishop e2, I play bishop d2, and then I checkmate you. Here, here, mate. It's a really funny way to win. Um, so he checked again. And then they got that same position I just showed you, except white doesn't have a pawn here. If white does have a pawn there, white resigns. And here, white resigned. So bishop takes g3 was really dumb. I mean, he allowed rook g5 drawing, and this, this just wins immediately. There's nothing to analyze. There's no analysis. Not playing this is weird. There's nothing to analyze. Like, king goes here, and you take all the pawns. Very strange that he didn't do that. Uh, Danya was, was flabbergasted. And I was thinking, well, okay, that probably wins too. But it does give him a drawing move. In fact, if you play the drawing move, since they both had no time, he might have lost anyway. Because he probably has to play accurately. And see, this is the problem. It's not that the players are bad. It's that we have slow chess which often ends in 1-1, one, one, and then we're deciding who goes to the next round by playing quicker and quicker and quicker. If you play lots of 10-minute, 25-5-minute in one day, you're exhausted. You're playing like really hard games against somebody of equivalent strength over and over and over again. And now, by the way, you both have 10 seconds left. And that's how we're deciding who goes to the next round. I mean, so that's, that's a tough way to make a living. And then when you guys are like, why are they blundering? Why aren't they playing like my engine? Because they have seconds left and they're exhausted. That's why. Also, your engine is probably better than them. So there's just like a lot of mistakes because you're just moving quickly. Now, you guys at home, you guys watch a lot of Twitch. So you're seeing one minute, three minute, five minute, 30 second, 10 second chess. So you're used to every move is a blunder. You're used to that. You watch Akaru play another Super GM. They play a three-minute game. They both have 30 seconds left, and the engine doesn't like their moves anymore. So you're like, why is Ben complaining about all these bad moves? It's not true in slow chess. When Akaru or Hansen or Naroditsky or the other big streamers who were 26, 2700, when they play slow chess, there's not all these blunders. There's just like small mistakes, maybe. And... These guys who play really well, who train really hard, now you're just moving as fast as you can, knock it over. I mean, now it just becomes silly. And so that's probably not a good way to decide who's the world champion. I mean, maybe it isn't. All right. I propose nothing. Yeah, and the world championship being decided by Rapid and Blitz is even sillier. Um, whenever the match is a tie, FIDE has a big meeting before the world championship and decides what's the stupidest thing we can do. So one thing they did was they said, the guy who's the world champion, he's still the world champion. So even though uh, Gelfand 
lost to Anand in a playoff. And Caruana lost to Carlson in a playoff. And Karyakin lost to Carlson in a playoff. All those matches were tied. It's still better than 70, 80, 90 years ago when they would have said, okay, Carlson wins. The match was a tie. So at least you're doing something. But, I mean, that's a silly way to decide who the slow world champion is by playing fast. That, that doesn't make any sense. It used to be that the, the, the guy just won if he, if he drew the match, which is also dumb. So... Delicious. Right, also dumb is to play for six months. That's also dumb. So every system is dumb. Man, harsh. Okay, 